In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to set up the Revive Ad Server on a Linux Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server. So let's take a look at a brief overview of the steps that you need to take to complete this setup. So first I'm going to show you how to set up Ubuntu Server, how to connect to the server via SSH, how to set up a custom host name and also how to install some package updates. Second, I'll show you how to download and install the LOMP stack. And then third, I'll show you how to install the Revive Ad Server. And then finally, I'll show you how to access the dashboard and complete the web-based post installation setup. So I'm going to open up VMware Fusion and then click on New. Choose the Ubuntu 22 ISO image file and then click on Continue. Select your firmware type and then click on Continue. Select Customize Settings and I'm going to set a name for the virtual machine. So in this case, I'm going to set it to Revive Ad Server and then click on Save. So I'm just going to attach the network adapter to the private to my Mac uh, interface. And also I'm just going to check the processor and memory configuration. And it looks like everything is now good to go. So I'm going to start the virtual machine now and, and quickly go through the installation process. So I'm just going to be using the default um, selections for the setup. And then once the installation is complete, I'm then going to show you how to set a static IP address for the virtual machine. But first, I'm going to type in a username as well as a computer name. And I'm going to specify a password that I'll use to actually log into the server. So click on Done, and the installation process should begin. So once the installation is complete, I'm going to restart the virtual machine and then log into the server using the username that I actually created during the installation process. So once that's done, I'm going to type in the command sudo su so that I can change to the root user account. And this will make it just easier for me to make the needed system level changes for this setup. So type in the command uh, nano etc net plan and then specify the 00 installer config.yaml file. In this file, I'm just going to change the DHCP4 parameter to false. And then I'm just going to specify a static IP address that the server is going to be using for this setup. So you just need to um, specify the IP configuration for your network in this uh, section. And then once you're done, press Ctrl O, press Enter, and then press Ctrl X to exit out of the file. Proceed to type in the command sudo netplan apply so that the network configuration will take effect. And then finally, I'll type in the command IP address list grep init. And as you can see, the static IP address that I've set has been configured successfully. So next, I'm going to change the network adapter configuration and I'm going to attach it to an interface that actually has an internet connection. And then I'm then going to connect to the server using my SSH uh, client on my MacBook. So the command is SSH administrator at the IP address that I configured, which is 192.168.0.105. So I'm going to run the command sudo su to change to the root user account. But before you can actually do that, you need to type in the password for your current user account. And then once you've authenticated, you can then change to the root user account. So finally, I'm going to run the command um, apt update to update the repository on this uh, Ubuntu server. So once that's done, I'm going to paste in a command for editing the Lightspeed repository. And then finally, I'm going to run through a command to install the Open Lightspeed uh, server as well as the lsphp81 package. So you just need to run through these commands so that you can actually set up the needed web server. So the installation should take about a minute or so, depending on the performance of your internet connection. Next, I'm going to paste in a command to install some needed PHP extensions. So these extensions will actually enable some features that the Revive Ad Server will actually need to function properly. So once that's done, I'm going to run a command to set a username and a password on the Open Lightspeed web server. So you just need to type in that path and once you press enter, you should be prompted to type in a username. So I'm going to set the username to admin and I'm going to type in a secure password. So that should then allow us to log into the Open Lightspeed uh, web server administration dashboard. So once that's done, I'm then going to install the MariaDB database engine. So type in the command apt install MariaDB server. So again, this installation should take about two minutes or less depending on the performance of your internet connection. 
And then finally, I'm going to run through the MySQL secure installation process. So type in the command sudo MySQL secure installation. And then you should then be asked a series of questions that are actually designed to make your installation more secure. So just respond to each prompt as I am doing. And then once you're done with that, we're then going to create a MySQL database. So type in the command MySQL U root P. And then once you've gained access to the MariaDB monitor, I just need you to copy and paste or type in the commands for creating a database. So you also need to make sure that you set a secure username and password and to also choose a database name that is actually not easy to guess. So type in the commands that I'm typing, replacing the database name, the database username and password with something that is a bit more secure. So once you're done with that, you then need to exit out of the MariaDB monitor. So I'm going to create a directory within the OpenLightSpeed server root, and this is where the actual ad server web application files are actually going to be hosted. So I'm going to run a simple Google search for revive ad server and then click on the revive ad server uh, link. So this should then open up the home page. So click on download and this should then open up the downloads page. So right click on the download link and then click on copy. Return back to the command line interface for the server and then change your working directory to the ad server directory that we actually created earlier. Proceed to type in the command wget and then paste in the link to download the ad server zip file. And once the download process is complete, I'm then going to install a utility called unzip. So type in the command apt install unzip. So we're actually going to then use this utility to extract the ad server zip file. So type in the command unzip and then type in revive ad server dot zip. So once the um, extraction process is complete, I'm just going to remove the zip file that we've actually uh, just downloaded. And then once that's done, I'll just need to rename the revive uh, ad server directory to something that is a bit more easy to remember. So I'll just rename it to public. So if you change into that public directory, you actually see that we've got an index.php file. So this is the file that the uh, web server will actually call whenever we try to access the ad server system. So I'm going to change the owner of the public directory, including all of the files that are within this directory, to the nobody user as well as the no group uh, group. And then next, I'll also change the permissions on this directory to 755. So you just need to type in the command search mode and then specify the recursive option. Type in 755 and then specify the public directory. And then uh, finally, I'm going to edit the host configuration file on my MacBook. So just type in the command nano etc hosts. And then in this file, I'm going to type in the IP address 192.168.0.105 and I'll point that to add server.local. So every time I need to access the system, I don't have to remember what the IP address is, but I just simply know that to access the system, I'm just going to use add server.local. So I'm going to uh, log into the Open Lightspeed uh, web server and I'm going to then uh, configure the virtual host for the system. So click on virtual hosts and then I'm just going to delete the default uh, example virtual host. Click on add and then we're just, just going to set the name for the virtual host to add server. I'm also going to set the virtual host root to the server root environment variable um, and then specify the add server directory that we actually created earlier. So for the config file, I'm just going to copy the recommended path and I'll just paste that into the config file field. I'll also change it from vhname to add server. And then finally, I'll set enable scripts to yes and then set restraint to no and then click save. So click on click to create and then click save. So click on view and then click on gen the general tab actually. Click on edit and then set the document root parameter. So I so that's just going to be the vh root environment variable and then I'll then specify the public uh, directory. So um, once that's done, I'll just click save to apply changes. So you now need to set the index files. So I'm just going to type in um, index.php as well as index.html and then set auto index to no and then click save. Uh, and then finally, I'll then configure the rewrite uh, tab. 
So click edit and then set the enable rewrite to yes as well as the autoload.ht access parameter. So I'm going to configure the um, PHP version that's actually running on the server. So I'll just set that to uh, LSPHP version 81 actually. So you just need to configure the command option and then just point that to LSPHP 81. So once that's done, I'm going to also edit the default listener and I'll just change it to actually listen on port 80. So click save and then add a virtual host mapping at the bottom section of the page. So I'm just going to set that to an asterisk on the domain field and then click save. So once that's done, you just need to restart the Lightspeed uh, server so that all of the changes will actually take effect. And if you type in the domain name that you set, you should now see the revive ad server um, installation wizard. So I'm just going to type in my the MySQL username uh, as well as the password and the database name and then click on continue. Okay, so I'm also going to type in an administrator username. I'm going to type in an administrator password and I'll just repeat the password in the repeat password field. And um, you just need to make sure you also select a language from the list of languages as well as an accurate time zone. So click on continue and you should now see the um, ad server so software installation um, now in progress. So um, once the installation is complete, we should now see the Revive Ad Server dashboard actually. So the installation process for the server takes about a minute or so. It just depends on the performance of the um, virtual machine actually. So click on continue and we should actually now see the dashboard. So that's been it guys, that's a quick look at how you can set up Revive Ad Server on a Linux Ubuntu 22.04 LTS uh, virtual machine. Please consider to like and subscribe to the channel and please also share this video with your peers, colleagues and friends. I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.